All right, so we got a package delivered the other day. And in that package, sort of an interesting little thing. I had a company reach out to me, and this is not a paid product placement at all. Purely just reached out and said, hey, we've got some heart rate monitors, do you wanna try them? So of course, I said, why not? We'll give them a go, see what they're like. Turns out, very, very cheap alternative to what I have been using, which I'm always a little bit cautious about. So in this video, what we're gonna be doing is firstly, unboxing it, having a bit of look at what they sent me, then also just testing them out, seeing is this the real deal and can a cheap heart rate monitor be just as good as the expensive ones? Your Polar, your Wahoo, your Garmin, whatever you might use. Where's the technology at and what's, it, what's going on? I'm gonna finish making my coffee, then we'll jump into it. All right, so we have got the little package here. Like I said in the introduction, we got sent a couple of heart rate monitors. Now, this is not a paid uh, promotion. I've not been paid to say anything here. I will always keep this channel very much an independent review. If I think something is no good, I'm gonna tell you. Like my integrity as a sports scientist is as such that I don't really care uh, if you're gonna try to offer me money and things like that. I want stuff that works and I want stuff that I can recommend to athletes and is actually gonna get the job done. Um, so if I think something's good and there's been things that I've used that I think is great, there's been other things that I've been like, mm, don't really know and I don't really think it's that worth it and I'll be the first one to admit it. So I just wanna put that up front before we jump into this. Now, this company called, I'm probably gonna get the pronunciation wrong here, Kuspo, um, Kuspo, C-O-O-S-P-O, -O um, sent me an email out of the blue a little while ago and said, hey, we've got some heart rate monitors. I think they also do a bike computer. We want you to have a play with them, see what you think uh, and let us know. So what, uh, what I've got here is a couple of heart rate monitors by the looks of things. And I've got, yep, their standard chest strap, um, heart rate monitor. These are incredibly cheap. I might put the prices on the screen, um, but their standard chest strap, which is obviously the first thing I'm gonna have a look at and compare. Um, but then also they sent me at one of their wrist-based um, or armband-based heart rate monitors, which um, a lot of people ask me questions about. I did a video previously on the channel, which I might link above, um, where I discussed what the difference is in terms of how one of these gets heart rate versus one of these. Um, I've always been a fan of the chest strap personally. Um, I just think it's a lot more reliable, a lot more accurate. Yes, I get it. Sometimes it can be a bit more uncomfortable um, for some athletes, but if you wanna make the most of your heart rate data, a chest strap is still the, the try and true method of getting as close as possible to what you would expect out of ECG, which is the gold standard. Um, the armbands, practicality wise, but I've always had my doubts around certain parts of the data and we might save that for a future video. So let's pop that one off to the side. So what we've got in the end is our little heart rate monitor, which I have cheekily unboxed off camera um, and opened up because I wanted to make sure that it worked. I wanted to make sure it had a battery on it and things like that. So this is what it looks like here. It just looks like any other heart rate monitor. Uh, exactly the same, but as I said before, they retail incredibly cheaper. And I guess that's something I've always been interested in uh, and particularly working with a lot of amateur athletes, uh, but also even in the elite space and the, the junior elite space is we want some of the data, we want the insight, but why are we having to pay an excessive, what seems sometimes an excessive amount for a heart rate monitor. Uh, no matter what brand you go with, I always hear in the lab, oh, I've got a Garmin and something went wrong and I had to send it back, or I've got a Polar and I had to send it back, or I've got a Wahoo and the strap broke, whatever it might be. Um, there's always little issues with any brand you get, and that's always gonna happen. Um, I kind of go, if we're just looking at heart rate primarily, why are we paying so much? And yes, some of these more expensive brands or, or um, companies have different metrics in them now, like the vertical oscillation uh, information can be interesting if you're looking at it. I would probably argue that most people watching this video, most people in the space uh, who train for endurance and do things like that, you're looking at heart rate and that's kind of all you're using this for. I mean, if you're really getting in the nitty gritty of some of those advanced metrics, you're probably in the very, very minority of people using these. So I sort of go, what is a simpler, more cost-effective solution but also technology's advanced so much now. These heart rate monitors and chest straps have been around for so long. A little bit of a rant here. I, I'm still baffled by how the technology hasn't been made cheaper um, over the years and it, it's kind of just got more expensive. Are you paying a bit for a brand and a sticker on the front? Maybe, um, but that's what we're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this to the lab and compare it to my Wahoo ticker. And that's what I've been using for the last couple of years. Um, not necessarily by any specific choice, just because it was most available to me and I had—I just happened to have one um, at the time. So um, I've been using a Wahoo ticker. I wanna compare it to this to see 
Does this stack up? Can a cheap heart rate monitor achieve the same result we're looking for compared to something that's a bit more expensive? Um, I do have a Polar H10 that I might uh, do a comparison to in the future, which is typically regarded as maybe the, the, the standard um, or the gold standard if we're looking at chest-based heart rate um, monitors like this. I'm gonna compare it to what I know because I know the data to expect, and I guess that's part of this trial. So we're gonna jump over to the lab. I've got a few tests to get through today. Um, so I've got a few athletes to work with. We'll jump in, do a zone two run. I'm actually gonna do it on the lever system. You have seen that on the channel previously. We'll get in, have a look at the data, and then we'll come back maybe tomorrow. We'll see how we go for time to break down that data and have a look at well, what happened. Were these heart rate monitors comparable? Does brand matter? Does cost matter? Can this be a better solution? Um, and can this sort of be a way forward to drive the industry forward to make these just more readily available, more affordable. So I'm gonna get all my stuff, finish this coffee, head over to the lab. We'll come back when I'm getting into that running session a little bit later on. All right, so we're here in the lab. I've got both of the heart rate monitors. I've got the one that I use currently. So I've been currently, over the last little while, been using a Wahoo ticker, um, but then we have the cheap version. So really this test, as we said, is just What's a branded heart rate monitor like? Does it actually make a difference? This is obviously an isolated circumstance. I'm gonna jump on and do one of my zone two runs utilizing the lever movement system as well. So unloaded body weight. Um, we're just looking for steady state here. So I wanna try and see a really consistent heart rate in this session. That's kind of the point of doing this run. Um, so that can really get an accurate comparison. I'm gonna start out with them uh, like this. So Wahoo on top. Uh, of the cheaper version, uh, if you like the, the Kuspo model. Um, halfway through the run, I'm actually gonna swap them um, to go either side, just to try and take out any bias because of the positioning of the heart rate strap. Let's jump on, let's do a bit of a zone two run, nice and cruisy, unloaded body weight, bit of top up case for me this week. And let's see what is the difference between heart rate between a cheap, no brand, versus pretty well known brand and something you pay a little bit more money for in terms of the Wahoo ticker. Um, yeah, let's see what the data shows. So I'm just gonna get myself hooked in. If you've seen on the channel uh, before, the lever system just allows me to take some body weight off. If you wanna go back and watch my explanation of what this does, I, I have it up on the channel, so go have a look at that one. I've actually found this a really useful tool um, in terms of implementing some additional top-up volume throughout the week, um, some extra zone 2Ks that I otherwise wouldn't normally um, get if my legs are feeling a little bit heavy um, post a game day or some tough training sessions. Like for example, last night, we had six 300 meters uh, on the two minutes, you had to come in as close to a minute as you can. Uh, leaving every two minutes is, is when we start the next rep. Um, and they're up, up back 50 meter shuttles. So like, to be honest, pretty brutal session. We did that after about four and a half, five Ks of total work uh, as well. And they're, they're as hard as you can. So legs are a little bit heavy today. Um, also did gym this morning. So um, taking a little bit of body weight off is just a good alternative and a good option for me to make sure the legs aren't as blown up, uh, ready for the next next day, so tomorrow's uh, main training session, um, but then also still getting that zone two stimulus. So allowing me to actually run at a really, really slow pace because I can feel nice and bouncy and light as well. So we're gonna jump into it. Uh, I've got everything hooked up, ready to go. Uh, heart rates uh, sort of synced. As you said, why who's at the top? Who's at the bottom? Let's just see what these numbers give us. We're going to be running about somewhere between 5 to 5 and 30 pace, um, 12, 11, 12 k's an hour. Um, really, really cruising. As I said, zone 2, just cruising along. Now, we're sort of just settling into it. What I've done is I've blinded myself to the cheap device. I don't want to know what data it comes up with. I'm already familiar with the Wahoo, and that's what's already connected to my watch. So I'm going to know throughout the testing what is happening, or throughout the session, what is happening to my heart rate as normal. Um, and keep an eye on that because I want to make sure the quality of my training session is okay. But I have no idea. I've got it on the two iPads uh, down below recording simultaneously. We're gonna break down that data at the end uh, and analyze it, but I don't want to know what this uh, cheap device is doing. Running, we'll settle in here, a couple of minutes in here. We're gonna run for about half an hour over, overall. We'll break it down once we finish. Maybe tomorrow, we'll break it down. Have a look at some of the data on the back end. Let's go.
Alright, so we are 23, 24 minutes in. I've done the switch, um, so you would have just seen I swapped them over. Sorry, the cruise got up the top. Wipe well, it down the bottom now. I've, I've offset them a little bit. You might see me adjusting that because um, I was initially, I think I was picking up a little bit of. I can tell on the Wahoo, it looked like it was reading a little low. Um, I think the sensors were just bumping into each other. So I've actually offset them a little bit, but I've put them in the same position. So the top one is slightly to my left, the bottom strap slightly to my right, and then when I swap them over, um, top versus bottom, I made sure they were in those same positions. So we've tried to control for as many factors as we can here. Um, heart rate wise from my Wahoo is what I expect, mid 140s. Like I said, I'm going to go for about 30 minutes. Um, should be about six or so K, so nearly done. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's going to be an interesting one to see where the dub is at. So I'm just going to finish out the rest of this run. We'll unhook everything, and then yeah, we'll we'll break down, have a look at the data. Probably tomorrow, um, wrapping up the day at work here. So we'll check in on the data tomorrow. Woo. So, results are in. Uh, yesterday we went for the run, um, measured everything up, downloaded it. I've just done a quick little analysis, and this by no means is a comprehensive summary. Um, by no means is this an extensive set of testing. Um, we did one run, but I wanted to look at the steady state and see if it compares. In my further investigation, when I was looking up some pricing comparisons again, um, I actually found that they just publicly put up, Cuspo put up on their website, and I'll put it up here, um, a pretty obvious comparison to a Polar H10, but they're claiming pretty similar results to what I saw, if not identical. So it basically compares exactly the same to the other heart rate brand. Um, in their circumstance, when they put on their website, they use Polar. In my circumstance here, um, I'm using Wahoo, and I'll put up the graph for you, but orange line is the Kuspo device, the blue line is Wahoo. Um, beginning of the run, I got on, started running, realized I wanted my drink bottle with me, wanted the fan on, wanted to chuck my headphones in. Um, so I unhooked everything, jumped off, got back on. Um, and then, so that's why you see a bit of a dip in heart rate at the start. Then I, as I mentioned, I had, a, I reckon I had a bit of interference from the two heart rate monitors bumping each other, um, which sort of is probably the reason why the Wahoo reads a little bit low, because I think that was the one copying it being the top strap. Um, once I sort of rectified that and split them, one left, one slightly right, um, you can see from from there, basically it's identical. Like you, you can barely see the blue line underneath, um, which means that it's it's recording exactly what we want it to do. Um, and that's fundamentally what a heart rate monitor's job is. It's just to measure our heart rate. Like unless we're looking at wanting to get into those advanced metrics, we at a very base level, I just want to use my heart rate monitor to measure heart rate. Like there are other things I'm worried about and concerned about um, trying to get that balance right between how much data do we need to use versus how much would it be nice to use. Like, if it's not making a difference or an impact for me, I'm not going to use it. And that's where just like heart rate-wise, I go, as long as it's doing its job as a heart rate monitor, that's the primary function. And and it does that. Um, pretty clear to see that it, it, it trends exactly the same. It picks up those subtle little changes. So when my heart rate dropped by two or so beats um, on the Wahoo, Kuzpo picked up that two-bit change as well. Uh, when it dropped at the end, when I jumped off, and they jumped back on, and they jumped off, um, just to see a bit of recovery and 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 uh, continue to run, it, it picked up those changes. So any anything here isn't really a surprise, and, and that's a big tick in the box. So uh, if we're then looking at prices of heart rate monitors, it's like the Polar at the moment, there's a few sales going on as I make this video. So the Polar typically retails for what, $140, which is a lot for a heart rate monitor. Um, a great monitor, somewhat a, a monitor that I want to use more for HRV purposes to sort of explore a bit of that in the next little while personally. But um, even Wahoo, like the new Wahoo's retail at like 80 or 90 bucks. But like Garmin, like the HRM Pro's like 140, $150 from memory. Um, the old HRM Dual, which is a monitor that's, that's stood up for quite some time and, and still works. Um, they're still $100. This is half half of that. Like. We're talking 50 bucks at the moment. It really matter if if you're just looking like the majority of us are at heart rate. Does it really actually matter if you buy something that's only sort of 50 bucks versus if you spend three times that amount? Because traditionally we have this attachment to oh, Polar might be the most accurate or um, it's been around for longer, so it must be the best. It's like this kind of technology is actually 
pretty simple. Um, it's it's been around for long enough now that it, it doesn't need to be overcomplicated, um, and the components and the parts and things like that, they're all much more uh, cost effective to be able to produce a pretty solid product. Like I mean, the quality and feel and build of this, okay, it feels pretty much the same. Like they're all going to have that sort of plasticky outside sort of feel. Um, I'm not too sure about it beeping that's kind of annoying um but in, in terms of like it's got a little light to indicate that it's that it's on um and the battery is working it's a replaceable battery like all of them like none of the heart rate monitors in the market are usb-c or rechargeable yet so that's not relevant um the chest strap feels like a reasonable quality i mean it feels no different to what polar straps have been traditionally as well um in terms of like the, the little clip-ins at the front what the electrode pad at the back is like um, I obviously haven't worn this for a long period of time. So we're talking about a 30, 35 minute total session here and, and it's an isolated circumstance. So maybe it's the type of thing that battery life over the long run. And, and again, back on my point of if you want those advanced metrics, this might not be an option for you and you may have to pay the extra. But if we're, if we're not as concerned about that and we know that the heart rate monitor might die eventually like, and you're gonna have to replace the battery at some point and let's get the cheaper one. Like, again, I'm not like... I sort of struggle to go like, why Why would we need to pay for the brand name um, when it's doing exactly the same job? So um, not necessarily just the Cuspo one here. If there's other cheaper ones on the market that pop up, like feel free to try those because they're probably going to be just as good as the expensive one. And I'm not trying to bash a particular brand here or really pump one up. Like Wahoo, I've loved the Wahoo strap over the last little while and I'll probably keep using it to be fair because it's connected to my watch and I've got some data and, and some backing. Um, like I said, I want to try the Polar H10 just for some other things. And, and it's it's this process of like, what do we need and what do you want out of the heart rate strap? If you just want the basic stuff, if you want the primary function of what a heart rate monitor is there to do, these work fine. The, the cheaper ones work just as good. Um, if you want some of the other things, well, yeah, that's where you go in those different directions. Um, I go, it's a viable option to use, more practical, save you a couple of dollars as well which then you can put back into other stuff, like save those extra couple of dollars and put back into a race entry or an, into your coaching um, or into um, into your Strava subscription, like whatever it might be. Like th there's so many other things you could do with that that saving of a hundred or so dollars compared to like a Polar, for example, the Garmin. Um, so that's really the summary. It works. Yes, they can post on their website that it's the same as a Polar, but I want to be like, well, how does it compare to what I use and, and what is it actually like? Um, in a no BS kind of way, and it and it stacks up. That's the that's the answer to the question. Like, is a cheap heart rate monitor worth it? Yeah, I mean, it does the job. So you got a little bit out of this video, a little bit of a different insight. Um, I'm going to play with their their armband version and compare chest strap versus armband, um, and, and sort of continue that conversation from that previous video I posted on the channel. So keep an eye out for that one over there. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Um, Leave a comment down below. Let's see what the community is using. What heart rate monitor are you using? That's my question, I guess, of this video. Which heart rate monitor do you use currently? Um, why do you use it as well? Like, is there any actual reason or do you just have it because you're like, oh, I've always used Polar or I've always used Garmin or I got it because of whatever other circumstance. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Always really interested to hear your thoughts and opinions. But otherwise, I'm going to leave it there for today. Looking forward to continuing to test some of these heart rate monitors and devices. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one.